Hi, and welcome to the Mathly YouTube channel. The following video was recorded by one of our staff members live at one of our contests. I'm Isaac, intern at Math League, and I'll be presenting one of the sprint problems. Here it is. So we're going to go over the last problem of sprint, um, sprint number 30, quadrilateral A, B, C, D with side lengths A, B, um, a, B equals five, B, C equals seven, C, D equals five, and D, A equals to one um, is inscribed in a circle. Circles with diameters A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A are drawn, and we want to find the area of the region that is inside the sm four smaller circles, but outside the largest circle. As you can see, um, most of the uh, smaller circles areas is inside the bigger circle. So we just want to find the total area of all of these loons. And what we can note is that um, what we want to do is take the areas of these uh, semicircles, which we know, and then subtract off these areas here. So these green areas here. And in order to find the area of this green region, what we can do is just um, take the large circle and then subtract off this um, quadrilaterals area. Okay, um, but it's a bit unclear on how we're going to find uh, this uh, quadrilaterals area. So um, what we can do is try to rearrange the um, side lengths here and see what we can do. Since this um, a quadrilateral is cyclic, um, we can basically swap adjacent side lengths and the areas will stay the same. And since we have the side lengths uh, one, five, seven, and five. Um, what we can do is uh, observe that five squared plus five squared equals to seven squared plus one squared. So basically, if we swap two of these side lengths to get a different quadrilateral, um, then what we get is a side length uh, that is five here, and then five here, and then one here, and then seven here. And this quadrilateral is cyclic. And since five squared plus five squared equals to seven squared plus one squared, um, we must have that this, these are right angles here. And cyclic quadrilateral like this, we have right angles and therefore this is a diameter and this diameter has length uh, five root two. So that's good. Now we know what the diameter of the circle is. Um, from here, we can figure out the area we want by adding the semicircle, subtracting the, um, the whole circle and then adding in the quadrilateral. But here's a cool um, here's a cool fact that we can uh, learn from this problem. Say we took just one of these semicircles with one of these uh, right triangles. So if we just took one of these semicircles like this, and then we just drew one of the triangles like this, we have side lengths one seven and diameter five root two. Say, but it could be any right triangle actually. And if we took um, the semicircles going out like this, well, it turns out that um, if we have any side lengths A, B, and C, then the area of these two semicircles actually turns out to be um, one half A squared pi, one half B squared pi, 
And then the area of this um, uh, semicircle all here, this yellow semicircle is one half C squared pi. And by the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals to C squared. And therefore these two semicircles here and here have the same area as this um, semicircle here. So what that means is that if we draw the semicircle here and the semicircle here, then the area of these two um, regions here is actually equal to the um, area of this triangle here. Isn't that surprising? So we can do the same thing with the other um, half of the circle here. These two red circles here, um, outside there of, of the large circle has the same area as this triangle here. So it turns out the area of these four circles outside of this larger circle is just the area of the quadrilateral. And um, this quadrilateral has the same area of this quadrilateral, which is just these two triangles like this. So the area of these two triangles sums up to one half times one times seven plus uh, one half times five times five. And this evaluates to seven over two plus 25 over two, 32 over two equals to 16. And our answer format indicates that A is 16 and B is zero. So our answer is 16A. Hi everybody, this is Tim. Hope you're enjoying our videos. If so, you know what to do, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that sort of thing. But what I'd really want to invite you to do is to send us an email at media at mathleague.org. Tell us which problems you'd like to see us cover next in our video series. Take care and see you in the next video.